good morning can you mohammad good morning sir good morning so tell us briefly about yourself introduce yourself take a minute or two sir i belong to madurai district in tamil nadu i did my mbbs from madurai medical college uh, presently i have been associated with an ngo named vidyal and have been providing tele consultation services to people at free of cost and my areas of interest include playing and watching comedy as well as hosting quizzes and i have hosted more than 7 big quizzes and uh, this is my first attempt in civil service examination oh excellent uh, but <laughs> mohammed why don't you speak a bit slow you know sure, sir. <laughs> no yeah. that's right uh, but tell yeah. me in madurai they are setting up uh, all india institute also no medical yes, aims sir. another aims there what is the yes, state sir. of that what is the stage now at what stage it is so presently there have been huge uh, hurdles presently uh, that are present due to the construction work that has been halted uh, for the aims to come so it is present however that the minister for uh, health in the department of health in the tamil nadu has promised to uh, fill in the seats this year itself so the future is uh, yet to be decided or uh, we can say that it will get operationalized in the next one or two years Okay, what's your optional for the civil services? Political science, sir. Oh, political science. Oh, it's remarkable. In the very first attempt, you have made it. Good. One or Thank two you, small, uh, one or two small things about medicine. Uh, tell me, what do you? What is Ayush? What is the full form of Ayush? Sir, Ayush stands for Ayurveda, Yoga, and Naturopathy, Yunani, uh, Siddha, and Homeopathy. naturopathy you say naturopathy yes sir is yoga and naturopathy <laughs> yoga okay what is siddha siddha is the traditional system of medicine uh, associated with that of the uh, siddhas who have been the sages who have been residing in the forest areas and this is uh, purely a traditional system of medicine based on the herbs as well as some sort of inorganic elements like mercury Uh, so this is this completely depends on uh, the human composition that is the body composition and they basically try to cure the diseases based on the composition uh, of uh, okay 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 where do you find siddha mainly used i, I mean uh, popular throughout the world i would hmm. i would say it is more popular in south india south india compared to that of the north india where the ayurveda system is predominant and we find the applications of siddha during the times of covid as well in the form of kapasura kudini uh, which has been the concoction preferred uh, to boost up the immunity okay okay <laughs> you try to be brief eh? <laughs> now yes, tell sir. me uh, now the up government they are they are advocating a family planning to you know not more than two children what do you think of this you have any so, view so firstly i would say uh, the population or uh, the population control should not be viewed purely from the point of view of demography uh, because uh, we have witnessed the example uh, from china where the population uh, control was purely viewed from the point of view of demography uh, so it wasn't successful secondly uh, the population control should not be by means of coercive measures rather we should i uh, encourage people to bring about the change from within by means of educating them as well as providing them contraception okay okay no oh, fine fine thank you what is demographic dividend demographic, demographic dividend ha huh. it refers to the people in the working age group uh, that is uh, from 18 to uh, 59 so uh, india is currently witnessing the pace of demographic no, 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 just just uh, just answer to the question and stop there don't go on sure, sir. Now, what sure, impact sir. it will have on the demographic dividend in another 20 years in up for example will it have any impact this population control uh, firstly uh, the total fertility rate uh, is below the replacement level that is it stands at 2.1 in many states including that of uttar pradesh so i would see uh, the increasing number of aging population in the next 20 years if such a measure is being adopted uh, and secondly it would be a huge burden on the exchequer to provide uh, pension as well as uh, retirement benefits 
uh, thirdly we would be witnessing the same situation similar to that of that we have witnessed in japan uh, uh, where we would be uh, seeing in radio decrease number of younger age population now which is not okay fine now tell me this is happening already in the south am i right yes sir it, it was already happening in the south as well and presently the huge concern for india is that uh, the increasing uh, in the aging population so uh, this is the common thread which we are going to witness after next 20 to 30 okay. years okay uh, thank you sinha sir thank you sir you know uh, hello mohammed aswin morning how are morning, you doing sir i am good sir okay good good uh just tell me a couple of things you know you are you are a qualified uh, medical doctor isn't it yes sir so what really i mean it's a usual kind of question but still i ask you know what really makes you think you know of going to civil services i think there is going to be total mismatch people tell me that okay sir if i am in the health department then i'll do this i'll do that but it is quite possible that you may never ever be in the health department in your service career you know because you don't determine uh, there is no system that you determine the department or the sector in which you will work you see so in that case don't you think it's going to be great mismatch you have got a brilliant career and uh, being a doctor is such a noble profession so why really think what attracts you towards this uh mundane or routine you know pedestrian kind of civil service if i may describe it like that so firstly uh while i was uh doing my internship i got a, an opportunity to interact with a lot of people uh thereby i came to know about the true relationship of the societal problems which are spanning across multiple sectors secondly i also got in touch with a few of the civil servants who are also doctors i got to know about the enhanced sphere of influence or to offer by civil service to bring about positive changes in the lives of the people uh, so the diversity in the service has also attracted me and more importantly during the times of pandemic uh, the entire humanity has realized what particular common thread uh, that is the expertise of the healthcare workers as well as the doctors and the knowledge of medicine is needed in at each and every level of the organization and i would say i can bring about my expertise of uh, healthcare and uh, knowledge of medicine while coming to civil services to serve the public in an even better way oh really but if that be so <clears throat> that you are interested in diversity you are interested if i may conclude power than glamour you know uh, are you interested in seeing good law and order situation in the country so definitely sir when power uh, is being administered responsibility and uh, with responsibility then it can bring about changes in the lives of the people then thereby it can automatically bring about a uh, uh, a peaceful law and order situation so i would say my priority is also going to be uh, law and order maintenance but if that be your priority that's very interesting but why is ips you have a very low opinion about ips you see sir uh, it doesn't mean that i have a no opinion i am uh, i know that each and every services is equally important over uh, my height criteria fell 3 cm short of the prescribed height criteria for ips which is 165 okay. cm okay my last question would be that i see that you are passionate about kabaddi yes sir and so if you become a sports secretary which is quite possible you see in the state or at the national level then uh, will you really advocate to the prime minister that you see why not make kabaddi as the national game it has it involves no cost every child out there without any resources without any stadium without that big infrastructure can play kabaddi so why not promote it you see sir uh, my piece of advice to the prime minister would be that promoting all sorts of na- traditional games including that of kabaddi are not focusing merely on the kabaddi part because we need to have an inclusive sports culture as well as to make sports as a way of life which is currently missing 
so i would uh, rather uh, prom- advise to the prime minister to promote all the sports on equal footing rather than giving only importance to kabaddi but, but but you see that's very good i'm happy with your answer but still i thought kabaddi could be most ex- inclusive you see of all the sports yes sir i so, definitely it, agree sir it, it, it's so easy no cost you limited space anywhere you know in your backyard or anywhere you can play you can organize it it's such a good game yes, it sir. is such a good game there is so much of movement there is so much of exercise so everything which you require from a sports you know is present there in the kabaddi so why not put you know more resources into kabaddi and maybe something peripheral may be happening on its own but what i am talking is government promoting kabaddi as a major sport in the country so presently uh, our former sports minister has uh, has announced that steps should be taken to introduce kabaddi into the 2024 paris olympics so uh, this is already uh, a sort of giving a thrust to this uh, traditional sport of kabaddi which involves both physical as well as mental endurance so but, uh, but i thought i thought government is being rather casual what is the kind of the source allocated what is the kind of whatever the clean play structure if the ministry talking of this is does it follow up with some concrete steps and measures so definitely i would say that uh, the financial backing needs to be promoted as well as infrastructure uh, sporting sports infrastructure needs to be promoted however steps have actively been taken Uh, to identify the grassroots level talent talents in the form of uh, kelo india sports as well as uh, promoting these uh, athletes from the grassroots levels in the form of financial support so i would say that uh, presently the steps are underway and we can expect more okay, to come okay okay jasmin thank you so, thank you so much, to, yeah yeah tyagarajan yes tyagarajan hello you 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 are muted tyagarajan ji you are muted kindly unmute yes now it is yes up. yeah ah uh, yes sir uh mr rizwin sir uh does this uh, rizwin carry any meaning if i may ask you mohammad rizwin sir my parents wanted me to have a very good islamic name as well as a victorious yes, name sir. so sir can you uh, hear me Rizwin, your audio is problem. Sir, can you hear me now? Is it fine now, sir? Ah, yeah, yeah. Sir, my parents wanted me to have uh, a very good Islamic name as well as a victorious name. So they gave, uh, they combined the Islamic name Rizwan, which means the gatekeeper of heaven, as well as the English word Min, uh, to have. Uh, my me name that's this win uh a good uh, riswin uh, international relations i would like to ask you about uh, the developments in afghan I, i'm sorry i missed uh, mr uh, sinivas sir's question on china but i hope this was not asked the developments in afghan the advancement of taliban what are your considered views on this uh, uh, mohammed was sir, this question uh, asked before no I'm sir sorry i missed the earlier audio no sir it was in last sir so firstly uh, the peace and tranquility in the afghanistan is essential for india as well as for the entire west asia uh, since uh, the turbulence in any part of the any part of this afghanistan would be a threat to the humanity everywhere secondly uh, we are taking active steps in the form of engaging with the dialogue with the taliban as well as with the afghanis uh, government to bring about the peace and tranquility over the taliban is forces are g- gaining ground and it is uh, a more threat to the india because it is in the immediate neighborhood of india as we have witnessed some sorts of uh, brutal incidents like hijacking of planes by taliban earlier so we need to be little more concerned with this so it is a greatest challenge to the indian diplomats in the coming days to negotiate with these 
Afghanis government as well as with the Taliban to have uh, a peace and tranquility within to achieve our objective of having the dual peace as well as the process to be led by Afghan uh, as well as Afghan owned and Afghan control. Oh, Mahmoud Ji, uh, uh, if I may persist with the question, how do you explain the phenomenon of Taliban? Uh, uh, does it enjoy some kind of a support among the public, the the uh, the Afghans themselves? Uh, tell us more, because it's rather enigmatic to us from what we gather from the media. Uh, how come it is repeatedly uh, impinging itself upon the uh, people of Afghanistan if it does not enjoy any support? Can you explain something in terms of the, the culture, the ideology? What do you think? Sir, so firstly, I would say that uh, the use of force by the Taliban has created a fear of psychosis among the people of the Afghanistan. Uh, so this is uh, bringing about some sort of support to these Taliban elements. Secondly, uh, the primary agenda of the Taliban is to... Uh, let not the elected government not to work. So this is creating some sort of negative impression among the public towards the elected government. So this is bringing the people closer towards uh, the Talibanis uh, agenda that is to have, uh, yeah. as well as uh, thirdly, I would say the presence of uh, US as well as the NATO army has also given thrust to this uh, Taliban's people, uh, Taliban because people have uh, more inclined, people are getting more inclined towards Taliban as they do not want any foreign forces. Uh, to be sorry, to sorry to interrupt you, uh, Muhammad, here, uh, uh, but uh, don't mind to persist with this question because I'm being tempted. Uh, broadly speaking, uh, Muhammad, do you think there's a kind of a, a misunderstanding of Islam? Uh, there is something wrong if you, because as a student of international relations, you, you find this problem, the, the clash of civilizations. Uh, Islam itself is a great religion, but unfortunately there is a perception outside Islam that it, it, there is some kind of a militancy uh, innate to the religion. I'm sure this is a misperception. Would you like to, I mean, suppose you were a diplomat, Indian Foreign Service, I suppose, is one of your choices. If you are the diplomat, at this critical juncture, Mahmoud, how would you go about explicating this phenomenon? No doubt Islam is a great religion, otherwise it would not have had the, the millennial history that it has. But um, across, the, across the countries, across um, diplomacy, this is a huge challenge. So uh, it's a delicate question, but I thought you are the best, best person to throw more light on this, Mohammed, if you don't mind. Sure, sir. Uh, firstly, uh, I, I agree with what you had said because uh, Islam has given a uh, tone of uh, militancy by the fringe elements present within the religion. Uh, they have been using the force to garner their own advantages which haven't been advocated by Islam. So, as a uh, diplomat, my course of action would be terrorism at any point of time or use of force uh, at any place is totally condemnable. So we need to have peace and tranquility as well as a rule-based world order for which uh, threat from threat in the form of religion or sorts of any forms of threats needs to be curbed. Uh, secondly, I would say that uh, we need to uh, we need to dehyphenate this uh, phenomenon of terror from that of the religion, since our focus should be on terror uh, rather than the terrorists. So. Uh, we need to focus on these terror elements. Uh, so uh, to have an effective uh, war against the terrorism, we need to dehyphenate this concept of uh, religion from terrorism. So this would be my uh, course of action. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Yes, Mr. Thank Tamla, you. please. Mama. Yeah. Oh. Sorry, because we had four members, <laughs> each candidate half an hour. Yeah. Tamta Ji, yes. Over to you. Sir, Mohammed, uh, I have seen your advertisement. It says about that 
you had passed out in uh, 2018 MBBS. And so, uh, after the, that, you're not working anywhere. So did you contribute by, by, by any means uh, to alleviate the uh, misery of the people during pandemic? Sir, firstly, I would like to clarify that I have completed my internship, compulsory rotary internship in 2019. After that, I have been preparing for civil services. Once the second wave of COVID got its peak, uh, I have been associated with an NGO named VDL and have been providing teleconsultation services to people at free of cost. So, uh, and presently, I have also been working with a nearby uh, clinic uh, as a duty physician. So, this is the way uh, I am. Uh, doing just this move to my uh, original profession of uh, being a doctor. Uh, in Bengal, we have got uh, three IS officer of 2015 batch and 2016 batch. They are working in some remote places like Jungle Mahal here and here. And their, uh, their support to the poor people in the villages, where the, the health sector is health infrastructure is nothing to take to, to, to be told about. So their popularity has been more than as a, this, this administrator rather than a, a government officer. Means they, they have contributed more uh, from their professional qualification rather than the, the government disabilities. Uh, How do you assess it? So firstly, uh, it is a very welcome move from the administrators because uh, they are able to understand the ground realities as well as to serve the people in an even more better way. Secondly, the people are getting more impressed and attracted towards those administrators who, uh, to, who are working with them and understanding their emotions and serving their uh, needs in an even better way. And thirdly, the knowledge of medicine as well as the expertise uh, associated with the preventive healthcare uh, focuses these administrators who are doctors uh, to focus more on creating the healthcare infrastructure as addressing uh, the core issue uh, of uh, the health, healthcare infrastructure deficit is the way forward to address the uh, healthcare problems which are prevailing in our country. So this is a very welcome move from uh, these administrators who have been doctors and I have been really inspired by them uh, to work uh, like them in a, while coming to, while serving as an administrator in the future. Sir. The last question I have got uh, about your profession only. Generally, it is believed that the doctors are more compassionate towards people than any other uh, this uh, profession. But in uh, practice, we have seen that during the, their uh, this uh, you know uh, the attachment with the private hospital and all that, they become more commercial minded rather than uh, this people friendly. So, what is your intake about this one? So first, firstly, it is quite unfortunate uh, that the commercializing trends in medicine are emerging so, and there is a rare, rare decline in the compassionate attitude from the doctors. Uh, and uh, I would say uh, there are uh, some more reasons associated with it. Uh, firstly, it is because of the skewed doctor to population ratio, which poses a lot of burden on the doctors. Uh, and hence, uh, they are uh, more stressed and have to work for very long hours. And secondly, the emotional intelligence training is missing in the curriculum of the doctors, which is also playing a huge role in uh, increasing in the commercialization trend associated with medical care. And thirdly, we need to have a robust system of regulatory uh, system for healthcare sector to reduce the commercialization and bring in back the earlier concept of compassionate attitude, which uh, is uh, missing in some parts uh, of the country among the healthcare workers. So. Uh, this, do you think, of, sir, sir, one more question I have got to ask him. One more question, sir. Okay, okay, please, sir. please. Uh, 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 Muhammad, uh, do you feel that, that this commercialization of uh, doctors have something to do with the capitation fee? Sir, I would say that this is also a huge uh, factor behind this commercialization attitude. So there needs to be regulation on the healthcare sector as a whole, uh, starting right from the healthcare education as well as uh, prescribing diagnostics and uh, the practice and the fees which they are charging. So we need to have a robust system of regulation 
starting from the health care education thank you thank you um, okay. mohammad when is your interview sir my interview is on september 13th september 13th you have lot of time now couple of suggestions you, you know i don't know i get the impression you give very long answers why don't you try to be brief and you know answer to the question and you don't have to say what all you know about a particular topic or a particular issue okay so confine yourself and give only the main or the central theme of the issue okay, okay sir because okay. the you are virtually testing our patience so to say <laughs> now you are very good uh, thing Uh, uh, now uh, the following things you should know a bit about uh, tamil nadu in general and madurai in particular the meenachi temple and then of course your hobby now for want of time we didn't ask you questions are pertaining to the economic issues so are you re- what papers are you reading sir the indian express as well as the hindu now don't read uh, choose only one i would prefer Uh, i mean personally recommend indian express okay, okay because you opted the foreign service number 3 okay, okay so you must know a bit and they they reproduce economist the indian express read one economic daily economic daily means business standard or financial express you know or mint or whatever now this is important because we did ask you but you should know things like highlights of economic survey budget 15th finance commission then rbi monetary policy all these issues you can't okay. escape you follow okay. now you must have one or two more marks before your interview if yes. you come before us at least i'll ask you number of questions on economic issues nothing on medical assets okay so okay, prepare yourself on that so all the best uh, sinatha okay, any one how oh. Yes, sir, uh, the usual thing I like to ask uh, Muhammad <laughs> when okay. uh, to make a self-assessment of this interview, Muhammad, and uh, out of hundred, how many marks will you give you to to your own performance? Sir, uh, I would say uh, eighty-five marks. I would be happy if you give hundred out of hundred. However, uh, based on my performance, <laughs> I would feel that uh, seventy to eighty percent. Okay. Okay. Well, Muhammad, I I do find that you are a very good candidate, but seventy yes. to eighty would be pushing perhaps higher. You see, you know, uh, maybe sixty-five to seventy. I would say yes at okay. present. You see, you should take note of what uh, Mr. Sridhar Marsan, our chairman, said. And at times, you know, I was finding difficulty, maybe because of your the style of his speaking to really understand. But well, those things may not be there once you are going physically to face the interview in UPSC. Uh, rest, I think, it is okay. But you are likely to face these questions. You know that being in the MBBS and doctor, what really attracts you? See. uh you know it's it you have to be convincing in your answer you see isn't it and uh, since in your hobby you have mentioned only kabaddi and so there is always this thing you know which i asked you i'm not really expanding on that uh and then ips being six you see so if you are giving precedence to revenue services then i i don't think it really sends a very balanced or right correct kind of what is politically correct kind of a message you see these are the questions which you are likely to face i just said that the second thing is that the daf you know daf 1 and 2 they are very very important from the point of view of the interview you know interview is guided majorly by what you have written in your daf you see every word from your name as it happened to the place you you belong your, your education your hobby your preferences of services and along with that in the current affairs and current affairs can be anything under the sun you know current affairs very it's very difficult to it can be something which may have happened just reported on the morning of 13th of september when you go to see or some recent happening some recent ruling by the supreme court some global you know major event which may have taken place olympics have just started you know so i suppose olympics uh, given your you see interest in kabaddi 
there can be a connect with the, with olympics i don't know if, if kabaddi is there in the olympics it's not that uh, not there <clears throat> not there so why not you see you know these kinds of questions what you know the board is trying to see is not what you reply but how you reply just remember this what you reply the content has already been tested in your written examinations you know when you are face to face to face in personality test they are looking at how you reply you know how you engage into conversation how you really you know how logical is your thinking how consistent is your argument etc etc so these are the kinds of things and uh, maybe our other, other members would also like to add yeah oh yes in case you have like any to, questions i would like to just uh, but in yeah. case you have any questions when uh, you do Mahal, ask you know, uh, at the end before leaving oh, yeah, sure. yes jagrajan uh, mr mohammed uh, i have nothing uh, much to say beyond what uh, uh, the chairman and uh, mr sinha said uh, yes your question uh, we have done very well in my opinion uh, what uh, srinivasan sir said was your answers are fine only thing is it has to be a little more uh, pointed for instance why being a doctor why waste your mbbs degree come into this that was a provocative question and you give a answer but it should be uh, if, if we can rehearse it because these are all expected question um when he said monday and etc very politely say no sir i do not agree they are very politely but my my experience as a health expert that is going to be of use in a bigger area so these are all very direct answers your diction your it has to be very concise and precise in that sense so don't take it otherwise i mean economics and senior some sort say uh, similarly on other questions also wherever possible the time available if you can write down so that the, it becomes precise it's it's a conference maker the ready man that is the, that is a point i would like to repeat after mr srinivasan sir thank you very much all the best you will do well thank you yes tamta ji this 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 nothing to add sir thank you very much sir nothing to add okay very good all the best Ah, Thank you, sir. Let us ask you in case, in case, sir, this man has any question to ask. Yes, please. If you have any question, sir, no, sir, no, sir. Because, uh, thank you ah, for spending your very time. Very good. Time. But thank keep you, reading, eh? Keep reading. Yes, sure, okay. thank you. Yeah. Especially yeah. COVID and you know the medicines and this that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. All the best. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thanks. You can leave. Leave thank this. You, yeah, you can leave.